Hi, this is Doug from 10 Minute Amiga Retrocast, and this is a special review edition of my program. Today I want to talk about power supplies. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I ordered a new membrane for my Amiga 500 because the keyboard had uh, died. What I think happened was over the years, I had it boxed away and I think something was on the keyboard pushing down on it and it broke the membrane in a couple places. I ordered a new membrane from Visalia that day, got it in in a week or two, put it in, Amiga 500 works perfect. And in that time, uh, I've also put in my uh, two megabyte mega chip expansion. I had a spare mega chip ex expansion laying around. I upgraded it to uh, two megabytes of chip RAM and I put on my Amiga uh, A590 CD drive. Uh, now this is the one that emulates the CD TV and can run virtually all CD TV software and also works fine as a CD drive from within the, uh, the Amiga. Now, the problem I had was that I seemed to be short one power supply. Uh, just like my Amiga 3000 power supply, I know it's around here someplace. I found two European style 220 volt Amiga 500 power supplies. I can barely remember where I even got them and why I still have them. But I, I think what happened was I, I sold an Amiga 500 years ago and it worked with either the 220 or the, the 110. And I think I sold it to someone in the States and I probably sent them my 110 power supply. That's what I think happened. But I was short of power supply. So when I went to play with my 590 and my 500, I ended up having to steal my Amiga 1200 power supply to use it. That's not any fun. So got online, started doing a little bit of research and uh, heard about this guy, Commodore Forever on eBay. And uh, he makes power supplies, not only for the Amiga series, but he also makes them for the Commodore 64, 128, um, the Plus 4, and, and all of those variations. And uh, what's really cool about his 8-bit computer power supplies is he's got a way that you can swap the ends and connectors and everything so you can use the same power supply on a 64 or a 128 or a 16 by uh, adapting the ends. He sells the adapters, which is kind of cool. Uh, but what I was interested in was the Amiga power supply. So I've got one in. First thing, it's very attractive. Let me get a little closer here. First thing, it is very attractive. It's got a cool little Amiga Boing, Bong lo Boing Ball logo here and the Amiga logo from the, uh, the mid to late 90s, the one that they used, and his logo down there. And that's just a sticker on the front. Uh, it's nice because it does come with a power light too, which our regular Amigas didn't. Um, so it's nice to know. Standard power switch here. Uh, it is vented on the sides to keep it cool. I've had this running for quite a few, uh, quite a long time now. No heat buildup at all from what I can tell. Feels nice and, and cool to the touch. And on the back, we've got our nice little inputs and outputs there. Now this is kind of nice because a lot of our traditional Amiga 500 and 1200 power supplies had one uh, lead in the back and one lead coming out the front. And that wasn't always the most attractive solution. Uh, it was harder to sit them on a desk, you know, or like I've got mine sitting right here on my, uh, my A590 uh, CD drive with a regular Amiga power supply. I wouldn't be able to do that because you'd have a big old honking cable coming right out the front here and it would look absolutely terrible and then get in the way. But with this one, it sits right on there, no problem at all. Not too worried about heat buildup. This will work with the Amiga 500, the Amiga 1200, the Amiga 600, and peripherals like the 590. It'll plug right into there and work absolutely perfect. And it has all of the amperage and the voltage that all of those devices need. Uh, let's dig a little deeper into the insides of the little guy and see what she looks like in there. Now, don't be fooled by these screws at the bottom here. They look like that'd be what you'd unscrew to get into the little guy, but they're connected to a board inside here. It's these screws on the side. Now, I can't imagine there's any particular reason why under normal circumstances you'd want to get into your power supply, but it is easy to get into in this case. Inside, 
it actually is very clean and very light. Uh, the whole thing weighs substantially less than um, uh, many of the Amiga power supplies. Um, but uh, it's very light, very airy. Got some nice heat sinks on here. Got some uh, fuse here. Everything looks like it's using good quality components. There you see, he's. that's how he's uh, connecting it up and giving it the Amiga signals that it needs. And those are all protected from shorting, which is kind of nice. Uh, a little bit of uh, epoxy here to keep all the cables in place so they won't be flying out. Uh, there's the, the LED light. That's also epoxied in place, as is the switch here. So it looks serviceable in case there's any problem. Here's the other end of those uh, screws in the bottom that actually holds the, the power supply in place. So it looks pretty good. Let's check the signals though and see how nice the signals are. So what we've got here is a power supply that will not uh, draw any current unless it's uh, actually drawing it from the computer. So I've got to have the computer on. I, if, I, if I try and measure it with the computer off, I just get nothing. So I'm going to check my ground pin here. This, this first one here should be pl uh, plus 12 volts and the blue cable. Yep, 12.4, that's all right. Let's check the red cable. Five volts, nice and steady. And then lastly, this yellow cable, what should that be, negative 12? Yeah, there we go, negative 12 right on the dot there. So those uh, power supply readings are actually a little bit better than on my uh, black 3 amp power supply that I actually use to power my my 590 um, that gets uh, it's off by maybe three quarters of a volt this one's within you know half a volt maximum so I would say uh, that's pretty darn good not too bad at all let me power it down get her hooked back up now on eBay you're gonna find him under a Commodore forever and he has some really good reviews here. We've got uh, 1,296 reviews, and I think he's at 100% uh, positive, which is kind of nice. Uh, now, these power supplies for the uh, Amigas, let's find it here. Amiga 500, 600, and 1200 power supplies, uh, 89.99. Uh, and they are, uh, well, plus shipping, of course. And your, your shipping may vary depending on how far you are away from South Carolina, where he's from. Um, as far as that price, you know, that's, that's fairly reasonable for a, a, a new power supply. Uh, maybe you could build it yourself for 40 or 50 bucks, but do you want to risk it? You know, if you've got those kind of skills, great. But uh, if not, you know, this is a professionally built, uh, tested, guaranteed power supply uh, so I think it's I think it's worth the money if, if that's what you need now some of his other power supplies like uh, here's just a straight Commodore 64 power supply 59.99 uh, we've got one 64 or 128 it'll work on either of them it comes with a little adapter 79.99 uh, and here he has some of the adapters for uh, converting over to the uh, 64 over to the plus four. Uh, so you can use it on some of the other devices. Now, some of the other cool things that he offers is this Raspberry Pi hat. So if you've got a, an old 8-bit uh, C64 or 128, uh, these, the Raspberry Pi has this thing called Pi 1541 that allows it to work as a uh, 1541 or a 1581 drive and, and be a fairly accurate uh, conversion. And he sells the toppers for that that you need to uh, plug in your uh, IEC cable. Uh, I just bought one of these. I'm going to be reviewing it in a couple of days. Now this one I like and I'm going to be getting one. This is a Commodore 64 Wi-Fi modem that will allow you to uh, telnet into BBSs. Uh, not the kind of 
modem that will necessarily get you online uh, you know, on the internet per se, but it will allow you to use it like a modem over your Wi-Fi and get on BBSs. Uh, here's another cool thing he offers, and he makes all this stuff. I believe he makes it all. This is a replacement SID chip for your Commodore 64 or 128. It will emulate either a 6581 or an 8580 SID chip. It's just a pop-in replacement. Mostly compatible. Can't use uh, like a with a mouse or a uh, paddle. That's the hand signal I'm trying to do there, paddle, because it doesn't have the potentiometer settings. But for audio, it works great. Um, and so he's got quite a few things. And he'll also have some uh, actual um, Amiga hardware on here um, occasionally, too. I've seen him where he's selling some Commodore 64, 128, or Amiga hardware. Uh, so I would say it's a pretty good deal. Now on YouTube, just take a uh, do a search for Commodore Forever. I'll also put a link to his uh, his videos in the description. But what he has on here are a lot of uh, repair videos, a lot of troubleshooting videos, and training videos on his his items. So there's one on his Commodore 64 replacement power supply. Uh, he's also got some stuff on uh, the bulletin board system. He actually has a, a dial-in type bulletin board that you can log into. He's got information on that. Um, uh, let's see, he's got a lot of stuff on his Amiga 1000, his Super CPU. So, uh, great site. Take a look and uh, maybe you'll learn something. And you can also learn something about the products that he sells. So, what's my opinion of the power supply? works fantastic, does everything I need it to do. Uh, you go to buy a used power supply on eBay, you're going to be buying a 30-year-old product and you're still going to spend between $40 and $70 for a used one that who knows how good it is. Or you can spend a few bucks, bucks more, get a brand new one that he's going to take care of if there's an issue. I assume he's going to take care of it if there's an issue. And you're going to have something reliable with a good solid voltage rating that will probably last you another 30 years or so. Uh, so I'd say give it a shot. If you're looking for power supplies for your 8-bit or you're looking for power supplies for your uh, your Amigas, give them a shot. See what you can do. So until next time, this is Doug from 10-Minute Amiga Retrocast signing out. <laughs>